Before we get into the topic, I just wanted to talk a little bit about how I know about this. So there's a number of people in my family who work in education. As I've stayed in the past, I come from kind of a probably an upper middle class family. And a lot of the upper middle class in Ontario are people who work in education because the top income for teachers is like $98,000. And it's similar for, it's a bit higher for principals, vice principals, secretaries, pretty much anyone who works in the public education system in Ontario is making bank. So the area I live in, in Toronto, there's a lot of teachers and we have them over the house. I talk to them. So I, I've, I've talked to probably dozens of them over time. And most of them tell me the same story. And they're from different parts of the province. So my point being, this isn't just like one anecdote. This isn't just like one person telling me this. Even if you can't, I can't find an official source on this. Anyways, so let's get into it. So the public school system in Ontario has become incredibly dangerous to be honest and and that might be kind of a weird thing to say because you're like well safe schools like they've gotten rid of a lot of playgrounds they're getting rid of gym they're getting rid of all these you can't like wear deodorant even almost in schools because of how sensitive they are to um allergies and that kind of thing and you're like so so how is it unsafe it's unsafe because they've basically eliminated all forms of punishment and they've eliminated all situations under which educational employees can touch children. Now, I know that kind of sounds bad, but I'll get to I don't mean it in a sexual way, obviously. So one of the things that we've had a lot of trouble in most first world countries, but I guess especially in Canada, is the continual rise of kids with disabilities, things like autism, things like ADHD, um, childhood depression, that kind of thing. And this is combined with an increasing number of single moms. So where these disabilities come from, I think part of it is overdiagnosis. Part of it is the fact that the modern school system is just not good for boys. And a large part of it is just women have babies a lot later now. And that it, the older a woman is, it dramatically increases the chance of some sort of, I don't know if defect is the right term, but some sort of, I think that's true to a certain extent for men as well, but it's, it's much, much less of an issue if there's an older man. I, I don't think it causes nearly probably like a tenth of the, the, the fetal defects that older women having children does. So, so you have this scenario. You also have a general lack of support. You can't discipline kids anymore. I'm not a huge fan of corporal punishment, but I, I kind of feel given the current situation, they might need to bring it back. So what is this all leading up to now that I've rambled on for a couple of minutes? Basically, because teachers aren't allowed to punish kids anymore and teachers aren't allowed to touch kids, kids can do whatever they want. And because of the way the system's set up, kids with severe behavioral problems are just put into the mainstream classes because it's considered inequitable or they just don't have the money because they're paying teachers so much to give them separate classes. So the teachers don't have separate, uh, the, the kids aren't in separate classes, so the kids can basically do whatever they want. So they will frequently attack other children. They will go through the room. I've heard this one a lot of times. They'll go through the room. They'll take everybody's books, like everybody's workbooks, and they'll tear the papers up from that. Uh, they'll like savage other children. They'll even attack the teacher. Uh, one teacher I know had a chair thrown at her and she actually had to go to the hospital to get checked out. Um, so this is very common. This happens at a lot of schools and there's nothing they can realistically do. They can either call the single mother in or the police. So th the strategy they've come up with is evacuating the class. So if one of the kids starts acting up, all the other kids are taken out. And if the kid is um, doing this in the hallway, all the people, they have a lockdown and all the classrooms lock their doors. And that's that's what it's like in the modern school system. They aren't allowed to do anything. So the kid can just run around the classroom and tear up everybody else's work and the classroom has to get evacuated. And you can lose dozens of periods and dozens of hours, maybe more a year because of this. 
And the kids are otherwise disruptive, like they'll talk over the teacher, they'll make fun of them, they'll make loud noises when they're trying to give a lecture or something. It's, it's really, really bad. And like I said, this is very common. And they can't discipline the kids because that's not fair. And it reinforces this terrible behavior. Because it's like with any form of uh, conditioning, if you're rewarded for bad things you do and not punished for bad things you do, your brain starts to wire itself in a way that this becomes acceptable. Not only that, it becomes something you should do. If, if they were more adequately punished or there was there's more i don't know if a stigma is the right term but if there there was more of a counterbalance to this they might not act up as much and then the other thing is that's bad for the other kids because to a large extent as humans we follow the lead of other people uh we we sometimes will wait to see if someone does something and then see how everybody else reacts and that's how we tell if something's maybe socially acceptable or not but you see this kid throwing chairs at other kids you see them upending desks you see them ripping up other people's work and the other kids are like well this is acceptable behavior this is something i can do because if i do this i'm not going to get punished at all and you can't really blame them for having that view i i would feel that way i wouldn't act that way just because it's not really in my nature to act that way but at the same time you can't really blame the other kids who are exposed to that and once they're exposed to that they like just they just basically copy the behavior and you just you see this just across the board and there, there's really no solution to it and this is only going to get worse over time and i i know another issue is because of the way equity policies work a lot of the time the the minority students even though they're a majority in toronto uh, can bully the old stock Canadian kids and there's no, they can't punish them. Like I remember when I was in high school, uh, a lot of the Pakistani kids would tell me once we're the majority, we're going to kill you and all the other white people or make you our slaves. And the Chinese people kind of had a, a similar way. And that's partially where China economy strong comes from. It just was my experience with uh, Chinese kids when I was in school. Um, just the way they they acted and that's kind of the norm in Canada and it's really sad it's only going to get worse as time goes on and it's the, the school system's a lot worse like indigenous education is a really big deal now the thing is that almost all indigenous in Ontario don't go to public schools but to make the indigenous kids feel better they get whole units devoted to them. So in some classes, there'll be more indigenous stuff than Shakespeare, or more indigenous stuff. Like I didn't learn any English or British history in school. I didn't really even learn anything about the monarchy. I didn't even really learn much about Canada until I think it was grade seven or eight. Um, I, I don't even remember if I learned anything about Canada in high school. I don't think I had to take a high school history class. I mean, I, I took a bunch of them because it's something I liked. But all like a lot of them, they'll they'll waste several periods a week doing this, and it's because there might be like ten native kids in the school board. So out of like forty thousand or however many students, there might be three or four, and they have to rechange everything in order to appeal to them, and that's the focus. And the other thing is, in Canada, we don't really have separation of church and state anymore, because like they force the kids to go to indigenous religious rituals. And I remember this happened even back in my day. And when I was, uh, I worked in the public sector for a while and they made us go to um, indigenous religious rituals. And so, so the, the government can as a uh, using force of law, make you take part in in religious rituals what, what i tended to do because obviously i'm christian so i don't want to take part in that is i'd say my asthma made it that the smoke from the smudging ceremony uh bothered me so i i, I was excused for medical reasons but that's kind of the reality and things like math scores continue to drop uh, kids are coming out functionally illiterate it's it's a mess 
And you're going to probably see a, a eventually a rise in antisocial behavior to something like what you have in England with the chavs and like the gangs of, of youth who just attack people. Oh, sorry, youth and young people. Because it's not all just youth. Some of it is like the actual British people who act that way. So, yeah, it's it's worse than you guys think. It is absolutely horrendous in our school system. And the Catholic school system's not not any better. I know I went to a concert at, I think it was University of, yeah, University of Toronto. I know it was the Jesuit college, but still, it's like the main Catholic university system. And they started off the concert by talking about Turtle Island as if it was a real thing. Uh, Turtle Island is an indigenous concept that North America is on the back of a turtle. And when I was in university, it was taught as fact. And they said it was fact too. And they they also said we need to give Toronto back. So if you ever wonder why I'm so cynical about Catholicism, it's, it's stuff like that. Anyways, I think I've rambled on long enough. The education system's a lot worse than you think it is. I know a lot of you guys think it's really bad to begin with. But anyways, hope you enjoyed. Well, I don't know if you can enjoy this video. I'll talk to you guys later.